Can I go, Misa? Can I have a seat? Good afternoon, sir. Can I have a seat? Please take a seat. Thank you, sir. Yogesh Kumar Meena. Yes, sir. Okay. Please introduce yourself to the board. Sure. Uh, sir, my name is Yogesh Kumar Meena. I was born and brought up in Mumbai. Thereafter, I did my graduation from IIT Bombay while doing a majors in computer science and engineering. After graduation, I embarked on my professional journey with Amazon, where I worked close to three and a half years as an applied scientist. And for the last two years, I have been dedicatedly preparing for the civil services examination. So, how many times have you given the examination? Sir, technically it's my second attempt, but it's my first attempt after leaving my job. First serious attempt. First serious attempt. Okay. And what happened in the first attempt? Sir, I could not clear the prelims. I gave it just for the experience and I was also over ambitious at that time. Okay. Now as a computer scientist, can you tell me who was the first programmer? And she happened to be a lady. And in fact, a computer program was named after her. Sir, I believe it. it uh, perhaps uh, you're talking about the lady who worked in NASA who did write, wrote a computer program for the Apollo program? No. No. Okay, sir. Somebody much earlier. Okay, sir. Sorry, sir. I... It was Ada Lovelace. And Ada, that computer program was named after her. Okay, sir. Okay. What are your hobbies? Sir, most of my hobbies are aligned in sports and games. I'm a very uh, big football fan as well as play football a lot. Mm. Recently, I've also started watching chess and Formula 1. Apart from that, sir, I go to the gym regularly uh, to keep myself physically engaged during the preparation. Okay, who are the Indians in the candidates tournament? Yes, sir. There are three three uh, Indian players in the candidates. Sir, uh, Ramesh Babu Pragnananda. The other one is Videsh Santosh Gujarati, and then third one is Brahmaraju Gukesh. And on the female side? Yes, sir. Koneru, Ham, uh, Koneru Hampi, sir. Hmm. She's... Uh, yes. Only Koneru Hampi? Or is there somebody else? Sir, from the Indian side... Okay, sir. Uh, sir, there was a lady who won the Grand Swiss. Uh, the, she's the sister of Pragnananda. Yes. What's sir, Vaishali. Vaishali. I missed her. Exactly. So don't forget her. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. <laughs> what was your optional? Sir, it was mathematics. Mathematics. Yes, sir. Okay. So tell us something about the most famous Indian mathematician ever. Sir, I what would say... What was the film made on him? Yes, sir. I sir, Mr. Srinivas Ramanujan. Uh, sir, he had a very informal education. In fact, he did. He was not privileged to get a formal education. When but did he, he had... born and when did he die? Sir, the years, I don't know. But he had an early death because of some issue, health issues that he witnessed while working in Britain. And mm -hmm. he did return to India, but he succumbed after a few years. Mm -hmm. uh, he lived for close to 32 or 34 years, I do not recall correctly. But sir, he had a knack uh, to come up with conjectures and then uh, very nice theorems, which he later proved as well. And he's known for his ability to come up with such conjectures. What was the film which was made on him? And who played the lead? Sorry, sir, I'm not into cinema and I haven't. Okay. Yogesh. Yes, sir. You come from the land of Shivaji. Yes, sir. Can you please briefly tell us the importance of forts in guerrilla warfare? Right, sir. Uh, sir, there are multiple importances. First of all, sir, uh, guerrilla warfare are based on the idea of shoot and scoot capabilities. Uh, sir, these people can basically attack uh, in a dense forested area and then can go back to their safe houses, which is the force, uh, where they can replenish their supplies as well. And uh, that is definitely one of the advantages. Apart from that, sir, I would say uh, a force serve as uh, you know, a projection of power as well. Uh, the, uh, basically, it keeps the other kingdoms in the neighborhood kingdoms uh, well uh, well thought of that the kingdom right now is doing very well. So, it's symbol of power as well. That is how I put it. Uh, so, these perhaps are the preferences. Why was it effective? Why was it effective? 
Sir, because it's so heavily fortified, it's difficult to break down the inner defenses of the fort. There are very few entry points which are very heavily guarded and defended. Uh, so perhaps that might be the reason why the forts are very... Okay. Again, uh, going back to your state, which style of architecture had an influence on Mumbai? I would say the biggest architecture was from the British uh, Victorian Indo Gothic uh, architecture. Uh, as we see in the Victoria Terminus, which is now known as the Shivaji Chhatrapati Maharaj uh, Terminus. Uh, apart from that, sir, the High Court building, there are these instances which actually show huge British uh, influence in the Mumbai architecture. What do you think are the three main factors uh, which lend the city of Mumbai to be known as a financial capital of India? Uh, sir, I would say the location of Mumbai, it's on um, the coast, uh, it's basically the coast. So initially it was the export import hub, the entry point, you could call it the entry point of India. So that was one of the biggest reasons. Apart from that, sir, definitely right now there's a lot of availability of capital. Sir, but I would also like to get a clarification. Do you want the historical reasons or the reason that are there contemporary reasons why? You can uh, take all the context, sure, sir. the old and the new. Sure, sir. Right now there is a very big availability of capital because uh, it's the financial hub, hub, hub of the India. So capital is available, startups are booming. Uh, that is perhaps one of the reasons. Uh, as well as sir, it's general connectivity. Uh, it's, uh, Equally distant, there is equal distance between the southern part of India as well as uh, the northern part of India. Some situated close to the middle, somewhere in the middle. So that also gives it an added advantage. Then why is the local leadership anchoring for uh, Maratha reservation and Maratha identity issue comes up often? Right, sir. So Won't it have a negative impact on all that? Sir, definitely. I, in fact, am not a very big supporter of the uh, reservation demand. The main issues that they highlight is that they, most of the parts in the central India, central Maharashtra as well as in eastern Maharashtra, which are majorly dependent on agriculture, have been under distress because of the ensuing effects of climate change as well as water scarcity and some host of other issues that we witness in farming in India. So that is the major uh, focal point of the Marathas to demand for reservation. Uh, so, so that they, they can participate in other educational and high-skilled, high-income jobs apart from agriculture. You have been exposed to private sector. Yes, sir. What is the present state of uh, PSUs? And do you support their privatization? Uh, sir, uh, currently, very recently, PSUs have been doing pretty well. Uh, their financial health has been better. The government is receiving a lot of dividends, specifically from NPPCB and these other companies. Uh, so, uh, there, and there has been a renewed push on disinvestment. Uh, based on what I would say, sir, I support the Indian policy, the Indian government's policy of having some presence in the strategic sectors and divesting other companies which perhaps might not uh, be very relevant in today's day and age and economy. So I definitely wholeheartedly support it. I wholeheartedly support that uh, idea of the Indian government. Privatization. Privatization with keeping some presence in the strategic sectors so that we can ensure national interest whenever there's any need. Okay. In that case, you might have heard about electoral bonds. Yes, sir. And uh, does it is it covered under RTI? Uh, sir, there are certain information, I mean, uh, so there, it's being debated that uh, the level of transparency is not very good. Uh, there are certain aspects which company donated to which party, these are not disclosed. Uh, but some aspects of it uh, might be included, uh, and although I'm not very sure. So I, but there's an ongoing debate and a case going on in the Supreme Court with regards to the transparency of electoral bonds, as it can promote chronic capitalism. Can you be a bit more specific? This is very general. One or two reasons which can be covered by RTI? Sir, uh, perhaps I would say, sir, on a broader level, uh, which political party uh, has received 
So I think there should be some aspects where the companies have to disclose uh, what level of political contribution that they have made. Uh, that should be there within RTI. So I'll think about it. Okay. Thank you. Jewish. Yes, sir. You know you have committed a mistake in your form. Sorry, sir. I do not know. Not noticed. Your employment should be in chronological order and you have reversed that. What do you understand by chronological order? Sir, by basically the time. The first order. coming first and the last coming last. You have reversed the order. Yes, sir. Fine. Okay, tell me something about Bombay. <coughs> the seven islands, name the seven islands. Seven islands? Yeah. Sorry, sir, I do not remember. Do not remember. Uh, you, uh, what are your views on reservation policy? Do you think that that has been the main cause of the brain drain in our country? Uh, sir, I would not single out reservation as the main cause of brain drain. Uh, as far as reservation policies are, go, like my view on it, uh, sir, I believe any reservation policy should not be static in nature. Uh, we should keep on looking at it from time to time and rush, keep on rationalizing. Do you support the existing re uh, reservation policy? Uh, sir, I do support reservation based on socio-economic conditions uh, and the historical past. Okay. But I also would like uh, the government to keep on looking at the ground impact and keep on rationalizing the policy. You are earning more than half a million a month. Yes, sir. And uh, UPC gave you option that if you want to leave your reservation, did you left that? No, sir. Why? Sir, I, the way that I see it uh, is I am uh, actually from a very humble background. Uh, my parents could not afford coaching when I was going for trying for IIT JE. Uh, I have worked my way up and uh, the sal perhaps the salaries do not cap encapsulate the entire picture. Uh, I, uh, so that's how I see it. Um, okay. So you were at uh, USA. Yes, sir. Uh, in 2018. How you see Indo-US uh, relations have evolved in past decade? Sir, I would definitely say they have uh, become a lot better uh, as was recently highlighted by the technology transfer deal that happened with the General Electric uh, the jet, jet engine uh, that, which shows the confidence and uh, the importance of India for the USA to counterbalance China. So definitely sir, the ties have gone for the better uh, and uh, right now there are some skirmishes which happened with the allegations of assassinations but apart from that I believe uh, overall the relations are on an upward trajectory. I am a layman, I am not someone who is from a technical background. I have heard something a lot about uh, this blockchain technology. Right. Can you please explain it? But I am not a technical person. Sure, sir. Sir, I would just give a brief background. Right now, a database is when data is stored. It is stored at a centralized place. There is one agency. That is how it is done. And there is supposed to there is, to put it as in the layman terms, uh, there is just one table and entries are put at a single place where a single person has its access. The blockchain technology tries to democratize uh, the entire infrastructure. It's a distributed ledger, as in uh, everyone can look at uh, the what the data is being added. Everyone can actually poll or uh, you know participate in the process of adding data, modifying data, and verifying data. So it basically uh, dis uh, democratizes the uh, database architecture. Uh, that is the main idea of blockchain. And there are multiple applications over blockchain, such fine, as cryptography. Fine, fine. Uh, so the the currency, the cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency. yes. Don't you think that has been a major threat to national security in long in, in, in this scenario? Sir, when it does have trace it back. Sir, it does have potentials to be threat, but at the current moment, uh, I do not see it as uh, a very big threat because it's first of all the adoption has been very low. Uh, secondly, sir, it's uh, also been regulated uh, by the countries. So because of these, as well as sir, I do believe that any asset cannot be currency at the same time. Uh, whenever it becomes an asset, it ceases to be a currency. So I, uh, it does have potential in the future, but what right is now. What the status of cryptocurrency in India? Sir, uh, we are allowed to trade uh, cryptocurrencies, but there's it's called virtual digital assets. Uh, so there's a 30% digital uh, uh, capital gains tax. On Fine, fair enough. Thank you so much. Yogesh. Yes, sir. I still can't believe that you had a package of six lakh rupees per month. Yes. And you left it and you want to join the civil services where your salary will start from one tenth of your monthly salary. Right, sir. How do we explain this? Sir, initially in my professional career, my decisions were driven by financial independence and financial security, the ideas of this. 
uh, once i did get to that position sir i started looking at the wider picture uh, i i started understanding that my value system closely aligns with the idea of civil services of public service and as well as sir i also witnessed uh, coming from a humble background i do had i did have a very easy way getting up i mean to the upper notches but i did see that the representation there was not uh, equitable uh, that's how i'd put it uh generally people uh, at those places were very privileged uh, so i do want to influence the policy making bring welfare to a lot of people try to bring equality of opportunity as well as sir uh, i do not judge a career just based on the monetary terms uh, civil services will offer me a lot of networking opportunities uh, it will allow me to work in diverse sectors so i see this as a long term investment in my own career uh, which can open up new opportunities in the tail end towards the tail end of my career the highest salary you can expect as a civil servant is 225000 rupees per month i mean Sir, you will be earning at least 20 times more just 5 years down the line every month right sir i'm sure your colleagues from iit Day, iit mumbai are settled in us earning much more running cam companies or working for companies i really do not understand sir uh, i the way that i put it is that i have already taken a very big pay cut when i came back from the us to work here in india uh financial gains perhaps does not impact me in way that it does other people uh, as well as i believe sir the marginal utility of money uh, after a certain point it diminishes very quickly okay all right sir ask you about ramanujam yes sir what is ramanujam number Uh, sir, if I can correct, re correctly recall, it's seventeen twenty nine, one thousand seven hundred twenty nine. It's a unique. It's the smallest number which can be represented as the sum of two cubes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, sir, it can be represented as. Uh, sir, I don't know which. What's the combination? But it's that's the number. Okay. What do you understand by quantum computing? Sure, sir. Sir, the classical computers, uh, the basic foundational unit is a bit, which can take the state of zero or one deterministically. In quantum computers, the basic unit it's called qubit. Uh, it can be zero, one, or any superposition of these po uh, these positions. So that allows it to take more states. Uh, so in classical computers, with each bit, additional bit, the computing power increases linearly, whereas in a quantum computer, it increases exponentially. Hmm. So that's okay. Uh, you, I see, have been in athletics. Yes, sir. And javelin throw was one of your activities, apart from high jump. Yes, sir. Javelin throw has become a very big craze these days. Why? Sir, it has been perhaps the gold medal that we won in the Olympics by Neeraj Chopra. Hmm. Uh, he has become a role model for people and brought the sport. Uh, How much the... distance he threw for? Uh, getting the gold medal, sir. I do not recall it correctly, but it was close to eighty-seven or eighty-eight meters. Uh, but I do not recall. Eighty-nine meters. Okay. How much did you throw at your best, sir? It was twelve years ago. I was physically not. Uh, so bad. how much did you throw, sir? I would say close to thirty, thirty-five meters. Oh, well, that's it. And you were winner. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, I was just a kid at that time. All right. Um, what, what do you understand by high-dimension high geometry? geometry? Sir, uh, it's basically, uh, sir. Although I do not need know specifically about it, but I would understand that uh, more dimensions. Right now, the BC world in three dimensions. So any shape that we can imagine, uh, envision in more dimensions, perhaps, uh, and studying those shapes uh, would be. Uh, can higher dimensions be displayed in any way in this two-dimensional pictorial uh, representation? so there are approximations such as the pca method uh, principal component analysis which basically takes a data from multiple high dimensions and tries to project them to smaller dimensions so that there are some techniques but these are approximation techniques i do not know uh, i'm not specifically aware of how it can be done do you feel that there uh, there is a possibility real time possibility of higher dimension uh, higher dimensions being present definitely sir when it comes to possibilities uh, during my scientific studies i have understood to keep my mind very open hmm. so i would definitely say there would be possibilities all right i'll give you a hypothesis newton's sorry einstein's theory of relativity one of the postulates is that space time uh, 
space time curves near gravity. All right, that is how you explain black hole and other things. If space time curves near gravity, you are saying that a four dimensional world is curving near gravity. Space has three dimension, time has the fourth one. It's curving near gravity. Does it not itself indicate the existence of the fifth dimension? Because any dimensional world, when it curves, it curves in the higher dimension. So can I think about it? Yeah. Sir, I believe the idea is that it's, it actually stretches a, a, it, uh, sir, it has distortions in the three dimensions. It brings distortions in the three dimensions that we already witnessed. Uh, so that is perhaps how I would think about it. It's not that it's curving on the fourth dimension. It's perhaps stretches. No, fourth dimension what he has already mentioned. So fifth space, dimension. Space time curves near gravity. Yes, sir. So space time is four dimensional world yes, which is curving near gravity. Right, sir. Sir, I that. So I'm it is not a full proof proof of a fifth dimensional existence. So in my opinion, no. But I'll read about it. All right. Okay. Yogesh. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. You come from capital of Chhatrapati Shivaji. Yes, sir. Raigad. Yes, sir. Tell me, why is Shivaji treated as father of Indian Navy, not Cholas? Sir, uh, specific reasons, I am not aware about the specific reasons. Uh, perhaps he uh, it was very, his existence was very close to the independence and people, there is very a uh, strong literature evidence about uh, the navy that he possessed as compared to perhaps cholas which existed uh, close to 10 centuries ago mm -hmm. so that might be an influencing uh, aspect but i'll have i'll have to read about it okay coming to your graduation from iit bombay you are a computer science student yes sir you might be very well aware about metaverse yes sir okay tell me for a layman to invest should i buy land on uh, metaverse or should I go for a flat in Bandra? What would be a good investment for me? Sir, I would suggest go for the flat in Bandra because it's mm -hmm. a real asset. Uh, metaverse is, its own existence is dependent on whoever owns the metaverse. Uh, so I would definitely, I would say it's a no-brainer. Recently somebody bought a land on metaverse, a famous uh, Punjabi celebrity. Are you aware of it? No, sorry, sorry, sir. He named it Balle Balle Land. Okay, so that's interesting. Uh, the layer Mahindi. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. IoT. Let's discuss about Internet of Things. Tell me the vulnerabilities of IoT. Why Indian government is not using IoT? Or is government using IoT? Sir, specifically if there are there have been any applications, then I'm not aware about them. Uh, the issues that I can foresee about IoT is uh, sir uh, completely automating a process without any human uh, supervision is mm -hmm. has a lot of threats in itself that limits iot's applications because uh, it can have in harmful it can act in harmful ways apart from that sir connectivity uh, right now 5g has been known that it, perhaps it can improve the connectivity issues so it it might increase the adoption but that has been uh, uh, definitely one of the issues perhaps the other thing that i can also think about is sir that we don't have a very big manufacturing base as of right now. Uh, if we do uh, import such hardware, that has its own downsides, uh, national security risks. So that might be another issue. So these are something that I can recall right now. Interesting. Uh, you might have visited UPSC website. You are a computer science student to fill the form and all. Tell me the back end and front end of UPSC website, upsc.com. Sir, uh, I actually I don't have any experience in software engineering. I mm -hmm. worked as an applied scientist, so I have very limited knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from that, sir, the front-end technologies, although I do not know, uh, I perhaps what I understand from my college knowledge, it would be jQuery, uh, JavaScript-based website. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps they might have used some template, uh, mm -hmm. but I do not know, sir. Uh, Why can... Indian government websites got hacked a lot? Quite a few times, government websites are hacked. Sir, I would say it's a very big target. First of mm -hmm. all, it's a very big target for our uh, hostile neighbors, uh, perhaps. 
to basically project their own uh, interests mm-hmm. so that is one reason apart from that sir i would say uh, they might not be very regularly updated for any security vulnerabilities uh, mm-hmm. because technology is a very rapidly evolving space perhaps they are not keeping time uh, keeping up with the times so that might be another issue okay yogesh you play football yes sir why india is not part of fifa sir we have not done well in fifa sir uh, we i just want a clarification sir are you asking why we have not done well and do not participate in world cups sir? yes yes sir that is my question yes sir mm-hmm. sir i would say the biggest downside is that we do not have a very well established scouting network that mm-hmm. prevents people from the grassroots and the rural talents to actually come and showcase their talent mm-hmm. apart from that sir there's a very big role uh, that media and influencers have to play uh, to basically improve the interest of the general masses uh additionally sir we also need to bring in more funding into uh, the entire ecosystem so that people can actually see this as a viable career option hmm. so that is another point apart from that sir recently the legendary manager asan wenger visited, visited india to set up a training academy in bhubaneswar he said that indian players are not particularly different from european players when they start playing football but the difference emerges after 10 15 years because they lack in football education Hmm. So sir that entire ecosystem is missing perhaps and uh, that is why we have not done very well in football. Okay Yogesh my last question why football in India has just two main epicenters north east and kerala why not in rajasthan as i can see you have roots in rajasthan Sir i feel uh, one of the reasons would be the historical reasons uh, the club in west bengal the mohan bagan club uh, it has uh, a very big history which mm-hmm. was set up during the british times and that has perhaps retained the interest of people apart from that sir uh, the religion dynamics perhaps have also played a big role in uh, the southern part of india mm-hmm. uh, where they have uh, followed players and uh, in general there have been there is also there would also be a dimension of government policies and government spending Uh, so we should take into account uh, that aspect as well so these might be some of the issues why that has basically happened okay thank you yogesh yogesh yes sir that brings us to the end of your interview we will just give some feedback and we'll... sure sir when is your interview sir it's on 15th of february oh, 15th of february okay so there is Almost a month for you to improve. Yes, sir. Overall, I think you did well today. Okay, sir. But you have to brush up on your diet. Definitely, sir. And secondly, don't take guesses. Like the very first question I asked you, who was the first programmer, <laughs> computer programmer? You took a guess. Don't take a guess. This is not a test of your knowledge. It's a test of your character, your honesty. and how well you are able to present which you are doing pretty well at the very sure sir and i thought your responses with regard to blockchain technology and quantum computing were very good thank you sir you were able to explain to people like me who is a layman hmm. and others also so overall you are doing well but don't guess and secondly just freshen up on current affairs also definitely sir all the best thank you sir um ha huh. No. my only comment will be that when you are answering to a member you should also move your gaze to other members once in a while and have eye contact sure sir about 65% 60 to 65% attention should be given to the person who has asked you the question mm-hmm. and others should be given the rest of the time sure, but sir. only once in a while have eye contact especially if somebody is nodding or if somebody is acknowledging your answer right, it's a good technique in in uh, social behavior as well Sure. So just follow that. I'll keep the that. The rest is fine. I think you are prepared for the interview. Thank you, sir. Okay. All the best. You want to say something? No, just the Thumbs shoes. Up. Okay, sir. They should match your suit. Okay, sir. I'll keep that. Black is the okay, sir. official acceptor. Sure. One thing uh, I'll say, Yogesh, that uh, initially I found you to be a bit casual hmm. uh, in your conversation. Later, I when I get to realize you can get into casual. Let's come back to. Uh, of course, uh, your uh, history of being in the corporate has an impact of that. Uh-huh. But you should create that that you have to be a bit formal. Sure. You have uh, 
good department of articulation of knowledge, but yes, yes. one thing is doing a lot of best work, it should not. Fine, best is fine. All the very best. Thanks. All the best. All the best. Thanks.